Welcome back, everybody. This is the Prepared Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Austin. And this week's episode, we got, we've we got so much to talk about. Uh, let's look at what's going on in the world. Our president may finally be getting his comeuppance. It seems that this uh, investigation into the Biden family and, and Hunter Biden is finally starting to uh, show teeth, I, I guess is probably the best way to put it, you know, they're finally talking about there's a whistleblower and a second whistleblower. And then I saw today too, that there's possibly articles of impeachment for our attorney general, uh, for Garland, you know, it's, it's interesting that all of this is coming to light after what is seemingly, you know, so many years of concealment of being able to suppress this information and, and really just a week or so after news broke that, uh, Hunter Biden. So that's president Joe Biden's son. If you, if you didn't know who had alleged, right. Cause I don't know if it's been, it may have been proven. I don't really dig that far into that stuff, but alleged I'll say ties to Ukraine, <clears throat> which we think that's a, a big part of all of uh, the money that we got sent over there is because of those business ties. And there, you know, there's text messages and obviously the whole fiasco with his laptop, which our government, uh, you know, misplaced and things like that. So a lot of people are up in arms about the Hunter thing, but this is just a week or two after the news broke that, uh, he was basically signing a plea deal. So, uh, the gun charge that everyone has been ranting and raving about for, for good reason too. Um, he's not going to do any jail time for that, which is just hilarious considering that his, his father's biggest issue, it seems today is, is fighting assault weapons, quote unquote, assault weapons and common sense gun control and, uh, gun law reform and and all these packages and things that he's trying to push through. It's really kind of, uh, hilarious. And <laughs> that's the way that it all ended up working out, you know, for the president's son of all people, uh, the family, which you would think, at least in terms of your political leanings and your political agenda, your family would be in lockstep. And I, I know that we can't always control what our family does, especially these uh, estranged children uh, who grew up in a life of uh, <laughs> a life of means, basically, right? You know, his dad's a lifelong politician, probably made a ton of money as most big politicians have. And this is what happens, you know, so I'm sure we're all gonna be watching eagerly with that. But it does kind of invalidate his stance, at least to I mean, to me, it definitely does. And I hope to most common sense Americans, it's like, well, why don't you practice what you preach type deal. And his own son uh, is not, you know, in line with what he's screaming for the few times that we do get him up on the podium. Um, And then as soon as these questions start to arise, he kind of runs off like a like a scared rabbit. It's it's quite entertaining at the very least, but I, I think we'll all be watching that very uh, anxiously to see how it turns out. Additionally, up here in Michigan, uh, if you guys didn't know, I'm in the southeast Michigan area around Detroit, um, and these Canadian wildfires, right, continue to rage on. And why is that important? Because the smoke from these wildfires continues to travel down into the continental United States. <clears throat> it's now at the point where uh, here in Southeast Michigan, uh, the air quality index, uh, which is measured on a daily basis. And some days it's rough, you know, for whatever reasons this week, especially has been terrible. You know, anything on the, the AQI or air quality index, anything that is scored upwards of 199 is of concern and anything over a score of 250 can actually per the, you know, their description and their, their own scoring metrics can cause health concerns and possible physical damage. Uh, here in Southeast Michigan, we've had areas that have what I have seen as high as 278 on that index. Uh, I know where I'm at. Uh, we've been in the mid to high 220s. Uh, I, you know, Tuesday it was 216. So when I went to go teach um, you know, high school marching band, as I do, uh, they actually pulled all the outdoor activities for the day. Uh, no practice outside. You had to go utilize, you know, classrooms and cafeterias and things to try and do marching band practice. Uh, and like I said, this is the third day now where this has gone on and you can, you know, we posted about it on Instagram you can look outside, you can see how bad things are. You can see it in the air. It looks like fog rolling in and it's, you know, midday five thirty in the evening. Um, and it looks like the fog's rolling in. It's, it's, I've never seen anything like this as an adult. Uh, I don't remember it ever being this bad. And there's reports that they still cannot get this fire under control in Canada. Um, it's, it's pretty concerning, you know, uh, that, that this is the state of things, uh, that we just, that, that we, 
we cannot seem to, as a, a world of countries with great means, right? Canada is by no by no stretch a poor country, and Canada is by no stretch, you know, uh, a a country that, that shouldn't be able to handle this. And here's the thing, as their southernmost neighbor, who is obviously very clearly impacted by this, wouldn't it be great right now if we could toss them a couple billion dollars in aid and support, um, if we could dispatch our troops or National Guard or something to help with this effort to control this? Wouldn't that wouldn't that be great? Um, unfortunately, we can't. And why can't we? Because all of our resources already went to Ukraine, and also because the sitting administration is a bunch of freaking idiots that pretend to care about environmental issues. Very similar to this. Um, and, you know, it just is just, uh, it's, it's something else, guys. Uh, I've I've gotten communications from people all over the country, down as far down as Kentucky, uh, as far out to the west as you know Utah, saying that they've had air quality issues uh, that are uncharacteristic for their their environments. So, I mean, more to come on this, but it it certainly highlights the need for respirators and potentially you know gas masks and things like that. Spending time outside, I mean, I could feel it when I came in from doing the lawn, and I have a small yard. Takes about 35 minutes to do the whole thing. And yeah, definitely breathing um, differently. Uh, some like slight burning in the throat and stuff like that because you're inhaling part, you know, particulates. So uh, a lot going on, you know, and there's a lot going on with us. It just happens to be this week as well. And we're going to get to that um, and have a great, great episode, you guys. Uh, this week, I can sit down with, uh, with Jamie, uh, or you guys might know her on Instagram as Unrelenting Wellness. Uh, talking about holistic nutrition and eating well and what, what basically what we're putting into our bodies, which I guess is a, a really good departure or stepping off from talking about everything we're inhaling in the air. Uh, a lot of people, myself included, struggle trying to unlock how to lose weight, how to be healthier, uh, because it is a big concern when we're talking about our preparedness and our overall capability. So a really, really interesting subject that I think a lot of people are curious about and, and looking for that help, right, to unlock those solutions. Um, and I think Jamie's going to be able to provide a lot of great information you guys are really, really going to dig. But before I get over to my conversation with Jamie, we do have Honestly, this is a pretty, pretty, you know, cool announcement here uh, for us at Prepared Mindset. But before I get to that, I do have to say thank you really quick to our Patreon patrons. Guys, if you're supporting us on Patreon, thank you. Thank you seriously so much. Your support means more than you guys realize. And every cent that we are able to raise through Patreon comes right back here to the podcast so we can keep bringing guests like Jamie on so we can keep producing the show uh, every week uh, so we can and do more there's there's plans by year end to do more we have content that's right now it's only available on the Patreon in long form video uh, you know we have blog articles there's shooting drills all kinds of good stuff on there and at a price point anybody can honestly come support us my big concern with even starting one of these you know because it seems like everybody has one is Is it going to be worth it? Is the juice worth the squeeze? I know some people pop up a Patreon. It's like, here you go, 15 bucks a month. And, you know, but is what I'm putting out worth 15 bucks a month to you? You know, um, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. That's Now, that's not what our tiers are. Our tiers start at $3 because I want this to be accessible if you want to support us. And then it steps up from there if you want to have access to more information, uh, more the long term uh, or long form, I should say, material. So seriously, thank you guys uh, to our Patreon supporters. If you are one, if you're not, head on over to patreon.com forward slash prepared underscore mindset underscore pod and check out what we're doing. Uh, and like I said, every cent that we make through Patreon comes right back here to the normal podcast, which you guys all have free access to. Uh, this is our main project and you know our main grind to make this as awesome as we can to bring as much great information to all of you. Now, in terms of supporting the podcast. Like I said, we have a special announcement, I guess, or maybe it's not special for you guys, but it's a freaking awesome for, for me and for the team here to, to make this announcement. But we have brought on a new partnership with the podcast. Very, very thrilled to announce that we are now working with HRT Tactical Gear. Guys, HRT is actually in our, they're our neighbors down south in in the state of Ohio. Uh, And while I have a general uh, (laughs) disdain for the state of Ohio, Chris and the guys at HRT are top notch. Um, Have been talking with them for several weeks. They sent some gear out for me to check out. And I was honestly just very impressed with the quality of the gear, the thought that goes into 
uh, you know, setting everything up. The the engineering, I guess, is probably the right word for it for their L back plate carrier, load bearing uh, plate carrier, and I mean, I've not seen anything like it. You know, a lot of carriers out there. Hey, here's your cummerbund. Hey, uh, here's your front flap. Here, stick your plates in here. You're done. You got some adjustments here and there. This is probably one of the most intricate plate systems that I've come across um, and really, really excited to get some time with it. Uh, very just impressed by the quality of the materials. The Velcro is, I mean, seriously, I had to fight with these things to get the plates in. And then if I had to make an adjustment, like it, there was some work there, man. It's it's really, really good stuff. Top notch. Like I said, there are neighbors down south in, in Columbus and um, you guys head on over to tactical, uh, HRT Tactical Gear. I'm sorry, HRTTacticalGear.com. Uh, they even started as a training company, guys. So they're just not some blokes that threw together a nylon business. Like these are professional end users that used to offer training and have d- you know developed themselves into making gear for law enforcement uh, as military applications. I mean, check out their their plate carriers, check out their placards, uh, their Maximus placard. Uh, you know, I, I could go on and on about how much storage space is in there. It's, it's amazing. Not to say what I was running before wasn't, wasn't good, but man, I didn't realize that in that, those same dimensions, I could have as much space and storage. Like I'm actually looking for stuff to fill this carrier and placard with. Uh, so great, great stuff there. Super, super excited to make that announcement. Um, and very happy that we get to work with HRT going forward. So again, head over to hrttacticalgear.com. As we're rolling into the 4th of July weekend here, um, at the time this releases, actually, they all have a 20% off sale going on on the site. So if you're looking to check out what they got going on, you know, pick up some of their gear, a tourniquet holder, a radio expander wing, just all kinds of good stuff, hrttacticalgear.com. Um, and certainly can't forget our, our existing partners that we've been working with that have been able to make everything to this point possible. So a huge thank you as well to Midwest Gunworks. Guys, check out MidwestGunworks.com. I'm perusing the site probably daily or every other day, just looking just to see what they got because they're always updating their site. They're always bringing in new inventory and they let you know if it's in stock, if it's out of stock. There are sites out there that will take your money and have you sit on your hands for 90 days or longer even before they ship it out because they just want your money, not Midwest. These guys have been in business since 1997. If they say it's in stock, they got it. It's going to be in your hands within three to five business days. Great shipping options. You know, all kinds of parts and components, guys. So if you're looking for a new barrel, you know, if you're working on tuning your gas system like I am and you need a different barrel, you can pick up a new barrel. Bolt carrier groups, magazines, all kinds of optics, uh, red dots, flashlights, full firearms, slings, gunsmithing tools. If you're looking to do some of your own maintenance, a lot of great, great products in stock over at Midwest. You can use discount code prepared mindset and save 5% off of your order. Thank you as well to 100 concepts guys love 100 concepts. They're actually dropping another one of their awesome hex caps for the Trijicon MRO It was either today or or this weekend. Um, Great, great stuff going on. Like I said, the hex, the hex caps, their scope caps, their light caps, the, the helmet scrims are fantastic. I'll be grabbing up one of those soon, uh, you know, to give us a gift actually for somebody who's getting their first helmet for their first night vision and just outstanding products, guys. Their company motto is do good, be dangerous, and live free. Head on over to 100concepts.com. Check out all the great stuff they got there on the site, and they're constantly adding new products, not just what they make. They partner with other companies. They have, you know, cloud defensive rain 3.0, uh, just all kinds of stuff. Head on over to 100concepts.com, support what Garrett Pierce and Jonah are working on last, but certainly definitely, uh, not least thank you to LARP labs. If you guys saw our Instagram live this week, I went over how easy it is to remove and apply some of the LARP labs vinyls after I painted my rifle the tiger stripe I had just wasn't doing it for me. So I grabbed some of their multi-cam wraps for my EOTech uh, EXPS2 Vortex Micro 3X magnifier and for my D-Ball laser unit. Got those swapped out, all three of them, in about 40 minutes. And that was with me talking to the camera and putzing around the way I do. Guys, LARPLabs.com. Use discount code prepared mindset to save you 10% off your order. And I believe they also have a 4th of July sale coming up with an even better discount code. Head on, head over to their Instagram page. It's at LARP labs and check out what they got going on guys. This is great. It's great quality stuff. 
3M computer cut vinyl. It's got a three year outdoor shelf life. It's not going to peel. It's not going to come off when it gets, you know, some rain on it. This is really durable stuff and it doesn't leave any sticky residue. All kinds of options for EOTech, Aimpoint, Vortex, you name it. Head on over to LARPLabs.com. All right, guys, like I said, my guest this week, Jamie and I, we're going to sit down. We have a great conversation around holistic nutrition. And guys, there's just so much information out there on nutrition. There's so much uh, snake oil and programs that guys from YouTube and Instagram want to sell you on how they're going to get you shredded, how they're going to get you healthy, how you can use their program and eat everything you want and still somehow magically lose weight. And it's very, very difficult as somebody who's found themselves in that position to actually achieve those goals reasonably and really beyond that, understand why. You know, one of the biggest awakenings I had was in the last year or so here figuring out my protein intake just wasn't where it should be. I actually had to eat more. Here I was trying to starve myself, trying to lose weight, not being able to figure it out and getting frustrated with, you know, not seeing the gains I wanted in the gym, not seeing the losses I wanted on the scale. Uh, And a lot of it, honestly, you want to lose weight that is done in the kitchen. Building muscle, that's the gym, but losing weight is the kitchen. So Jamie and I are going to get into a whole bunch of really good stuff. And, you know, honestly, I'm just going to quit talking about it and we're going to jump right on over to my conversation with her. Here we go, guys. Hi, Jamie. Welcome to the pod and and thanks for joining me. All right. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. I I am as well. Um, I think that with everything that you share uh, on and I, and and, I, and forgive me because I'm only really familiar with your work through social media, so I don't know other platforms mm-hmm. you're on. But I, I know that the information you share specifically through your Instagram is stuff that, and this is my opinion, and people can probably disagree if they want. But I think it's more people need access to. They need to realize that if we're talking about in terms of health and fitness, it's it's got so much more to do with what goes into our bodies than, than how much time we put in at the gym. Like one of the most profound things a buddy ever told me was like, if you want to build weight or uh, build muscle, go to the gym. If you're trying to cut weight, which is everyone's problem, that's all done in the kitchen. So, and I was like, wow, that, that just ruined my, my day. Cause I've been <laughs> thinking that, you know, you know, I mean, and I, I get that they work together. Right. And they do, but yeah, I was like, well, if I just work hard enough in the gym, then it won't matter what I do at home. And not yeah. exactly how that works. So uh, let's just jump in. I mean, can you go ahead and introduce yourself to the listeners and, and talk about what you do? Well, my name is Jamie. I'm actually a new, um, new <laughs> nutritional therapy practitioner. I don't know why I struggled with that. Um, I work with clients one on one, mostly in the capacity of they've tried all the diets you know, they're not burning fat. They, they have digestive dysfunction. They have joint pain. They may deal with some autoimmune conditions, um, all sorts of stuff. So they usually come to me overwhelmed after trying a million other things like I did in my past. And we, I have a one-on-one, um, like very bio individual approach. We, I have a full evaluation. We can go over all your symptoms, your diet, your lifestyle, your mood, bowel movements, like everything under the sun, I'm going to need to know. And from there, we work together for six months and um, we're, I'm basically walking alongside you. We're creating habits. We're not, you know, waiting around for motivation to strike. We're just getting you to implement changes in your life that will bring you the results that you need based off of, you know, your unique needs where you're at. And that's, that's honestly, that's pretty awesome to hear. You know, I, uh, beginning of last year, I went through some physical therapy for like, I don't know, 12 or 14 weeks. And the first, the first session, I thought this was like, I was going to walk in, we were going to spend an hour just doing a bunch of stretches and play with like a giant yoga ball. Uh, <laughs> Cause I'd never done physical therapy, but uh, the lady, yeah. uh, her name was Jean. She was amazing. And the first session that we spent together for a whole hour, she did what you were just talking about. Like here, tell me, talk to me about how you eat. Like what's your diet look like? What does your exercise look like? You know, what, what does your sleep look like? How, you know, how much are you sleeping? Is it, consistent you know what do your bowel movements look like and i was like that's wait really you want to like yeah like i can tell you but it's kind of weird and so that and and then like from there would like explain well this is why this is important this is what this Mm -hmm. leads to or or points to or indicates like here's what we need to adjust or like work Mm -hmm. on and um and i was like wow i was i was completely blown away at at how Mm -hmm. much of that is like i guess like individually prescriptive rather than you know, it, 
you see so many of these things we were talking, you know, just a few moments ago before we recorded, right. About all these programs and plans you see people advertise like, Oh, with my plan, you'll shred your weight and, and you know, you'll accomplish all these goals and stuff. And it's like, that just makes it sound so one size fits all. Yeah, you know, absolutely. And I think that's where a lot of people get, uh, maybe depressed, right. Or discouraged Mm -hmm. because they, they go and they find those plans and they pay I mean, I've never paid for one. I did pay for Weight Watchers and that actually did work quite a bit um, mm-hmm. right before my wedding. Uh, I went from like 285 down to like 237 um, oh, wow. over the course of like seven or eight months. Um, and that was like with me. I mean, I was not happy by the end of it. I was happy with the number, but I was not living my best life. And then we went to Vegas yeah. for the wedding and I was like, I'll eat and drink whatever I want. And I've never seen that number since. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's I was like, all downhill you know, from there. Yeah, it was. I mean, but I haven't gone back to that, you know, and I think a lot of that has to do with what people are are consuming daily that we don't think mm-hmm. about. Right. Mm-hmm. So like, can you like, let's talk about some of the basic things that because I think in in the space that at least people, my audience, right. It's a lot of preparedness and a lot of concern around personal capability, fitness, mm-hmm. uh, being able to uh carry your gear being able to go for extended periods of time and lift you know another person's body weight let alone what you're going to do with your own so removing weight and building muscle are basically the two main goals but mm-hmm. and i know i can say this confidently i have struggled with removing with removing weight i've built muscle mm-hmm. i've seen it but i cannot lose the weight the way that i want to where do people, I mean, where do you start, you know, and you don't have to get necessarily into like the granularity of the science behind it, but where, I mean, I guess where, where maybe the better question is where do people misunderstand how they should be looking at this? Um, a lot of people are out for a quick fix and they see the quick fix is helping people lose weight. For example, people do keto, they drop all the carbs and they start dropping weight and they're like, Oh, this is great. I'm getting whatever I want. But they're not focusing on actual nourishment. So making sure that you're not even just nourishing your body, but you're nourishing your mind and your soul. Um, Those are all connected for your health, but we're looking at like foundational stuff. Like what are you eating? Are you eating enough protein? Are you getting enough carbs? Are you getting enough minerals and actually hydrating yourself and not just pounding water down all day, like random bottled water. And, and so I'm, I don't even mean to interrupt you, but I saw oh, you good. posted something like that uh, maybe it was a couple of months ago because that mm-hmm. was one of the first things I started doing was people were like, dude, drink more water. You're just, you're drinking too much sugar. You're drinking whatever. I'm like, all right, man, I'll just, I'll start pounding water. And I was drinking like four 32 ounce Nalgene a day and just peeing nonstop. And I was like, yeah. this is great. This is healthy. I'm drinking tons of water. Um, but that's, that can actually be detrimental to some end, right? Yeah. And it, de- it depends on what kind of water you're drinking for one. Um, a lot of the bottled water is crap. There's better ones. I mean, like Dasani is not going to do you any favors, stuff like that. Um, but you really want to make sure you're getting, you know, magnesium, potassium, sodium. That's what's usually in those hydration packets that you can buy. And there's some really good ones of those. Um, eating fruit, getting enough good saturated fats in your diet. Um, all of those things hydrate you. Drinking broth, um, stuff like that. But if you're just chugging water, a lot of the water is just void of minerals and it's not doing you any favors. You're just actually flushing the rest of the minerals out. Yeah. So. And, and I had heard something like that too, about, uh, I don't even know the truth to this either, but that's why some people say, Hey, uh, multivitamins aren't all they're cracked up to be in sales pitches either, because your body doesn't mm-hmm. even have time to absorb all of that mm-hmm. before it's being flushed through your system. Yeah. And one of the things that I try to look at in my practice too, is, you know, if we're, if someone's saying that they're low in vitamin D um, or something that's in whatever vitamin they're taking that they think they need, let's figure out why, because there could be a lot of digestive dysfunction going on. So you're not absorbing fats. Um, Maybe you can't, there is a gene mutation where some people can't process B vitamins if they're in a supplement form. Um, there's just so, there's so many factors that go into it. And I don't recommend any of those multivitamins. If you want a good multivitamin, you can take like a beef liver capsule, whole food form mm-hmm. and you got it and you're good. And that would be better than like, 
at, what is it like the centrum uh they do what uh, i don't even know they've got like the daily different variants yeah like or, or one a day men's or whatever that everyone you know I, yeah. I my dad my dad took one every day for like i don't know he probably still does uh he did when i was living at home um and it's been several years since that was a thing so uh when i found that out i was like really that's a waste it, yeah. it just it was so surprising and it's but that that's like inst uh institutionalized knowledge like people think yeah. for sure like hey i take my vitamin every day i drink all this water and i work out like i should be fit as a fiddle and then you know having broken into my as soon as i hit 30 i feel like i like walked into a wall and it was like here you're going to start having digestive issues that mm -hmm. you know pop up from from time to time you're going to start having health issues that are related to sitting at work too much you know and so much of it it's it, and it's frustrating because yeah. it nothing makes sense to people that yeah. don't know what they're looking like i was extremely frustrated for probably two and a half years not really mm -hmm. before i started going to the, the doctor and uh and and the therapist uh that kind of helped me at least a little bit to understand like you're it's not you it's just what you're doing isn't working i mm -hmm. guess so yeah. sorry with with people that are trying to to figure that stuff out like there's so much information out there. What are some of the things that they get thrown out there that really just aren't, they don't work. You hear a ton of it, kind of like oh the multivitamin thing. I could probably talk for a week about this. <laughs> <laughs> I usually, people know I like to rant. I have friends that will send me articles or advertisements and I will just go off. But um, one of the basic things people get told if they're dealing with any kind of ailment is you got to cut dairy, you got to cut out red meat, you got to cut out sugar and carbs, and that'll solve all your problems. Any type of quick fix, this will solve your problems type yeah. marketing is not going to solve your problems. You may think that is going well for a while, but in the long run, it's going to have detrimental effects. Um when somebody says stuff like that to me, I'm like, okay, well, what kind of dairy? And also why can't you digest the dairy? There's one carbs. Glucose is your main source of fuel for the cell. So you need it. I, I wouldn't recommend like high fructose corn syrup and stuff, but like, you know, sure. maple syrup, honey, fruit, um, some root vegetables, stuff like that. Um, oh my God. What else? Any diet like keto, anything low carb, anything with a bunch of wild claims that are going to solve your problems is going to really send me over the edge <laughs> because well, it's not, and not sustainable. And I am here to help you create sustainable changes. So you know how, to, so you don't feel like you're dieting. You should be eating all the foods you love. You should enjoy food, you know, enjoy your life. You shouldn't feel like you're on a diet. And that's one of the biggest things of working with me is I try to make that as possible as I can for you with it, with whatever state you're in when you sign on with me. And that, that was when I, so when I had lost all that weight several years ago with Weight Watchers, like for me, it was, that was probably the worst part. Like I wanted to quit several times. No, I was doing yeah. it with my now wife, obviously. So she was sitting there going, no, come on, we can do this together. And that, that helped a lot. Um, yeah. But like, I remember specifically, I, I kind of equate it uh, to like one of the several attempts my mother made at quitting smoking where like that first two weeks is, is like your withdrawal phase almost like, mm -hmm. and if anybody's never done it, like Weight Watchers is like a point system, which kind of works, but at the same time, never made sense to me. But I remember very vividly, I don't know why one day we went and stopped at the gas station and I went and I bought a bag of combos because I was like big, I'm big on salty snacks. And I was like, oh yeah, I just mm -hmm. really want some pizza combos. <laughs> <laughs> and I got in the car and I like go to open this bag and she's like, well, what are you doing? I was like, just going to eat. She said, well, have you, have you plugged it into the app? And I go, you know, no, let's get the stupid phone out and look. And it was like, it was a day and a half's worth of points because of how just like processed and crappy, you know, fake mm -hmm. cheese and, and pretzel are for me. And yeah. I like had like a rage fit for like probably three solid minutes like well what the hell am i supposed to eat how the hell am i supposed to i i just i couldn't deal it was such a wild departure from the poor diet that i had and i didn't know how to like and and maybe i don't know maybe is this something you see with your clients is i didn't know how to satisfy those those food urges with with mm -hmm. healthier options like 
a great example that we that we did here in my home was, and this is because I read one of Jack Carr's books uh, partially. We went from using uh, coffee creamer, which is terrible, just terrible mm-hmm. crap, to milk and honey. I read it in the book and I was like, oh, that's interesting. I, let's go ahead and try that. And I knew creamer was bad for me, but I couldn't drink black coffee because I just couldn't palate it. And yeah. I was like, oh, this is actually pretty good. I like this. And it's, you know, nat local honey is supposed to be very good for you for a lot of reasons. And mm-hmm. I'd like, we always got milk in the house and I'm good with milk. So cool. There we go. That was, and I never felt like I really lost out on something because I didn't drink coffee creamer because I liked the confetti cake flavor or whatever. It was just because I needed something to help cut the bitterness of my coffee. Um, yeah. So, I mean, is that something you see a lot, you know, with, with your clients is just not understanding where to f- address those uh, urges? Yeah. A lot of people, I mean, your cravings can tell a lot about what you have going on. For example, if you're a person, you know, this happens a lot, this specific situation, you're doing well all day. You feel like you're hitting your protein. Maybe, maybe not. Um eating what you think is healthy, what you've heard is healthy. And then you get to the end of the day and you're like about to binge on sweets or salty things or whatever. And usually that's a big sign of blood sugar dysregulation, which is caused by for caused by a myriad of different things. But a lot of times people just aren't getting enough balance of those macros throughout the day. So their blood sugar is just up and down all day long, just crashing. And when usually when you're crashing, that's when you're going to crave like, whatever random process snack because your body just needs energy. But if you're focusing on eating, you know, the whole foods as close to the whole food as you can and making sure to hit those macros, you see those cravings start to diminish because you're actually nourishing your body and getting the fuel that you need. Now, that being said, I still love candy and cake and cookies and all that sort of thing. And I have ice cream every single night. So I was going to say ice cream is my, that is my, Vice it's non-negotiable, sure. non-negotiable for me. That's that's my bedtime snack. So um yeah, the the cravings that you have, if you're feeling just like ravenous, that's a big sign that you're just simply not eating enough. And that's what happens with those diets. Like all of those different diets that restrict you and put you on this like in this little bubble is you're not satisfied. And so you know, then you go to reach for a snack and it makes you feel like crap, or you just, the the mental gymnastics that you go through to try to get to health, but also enjoy yourself is I think one of the worst parts for people. And that's something that we were, I work through with almost all my clients too. Well, and the mental piece of it too, like the, the, and it maybe, and I don't think enough people think about this too, is the stress component that you Mm -hmm. endure while going through this. Like I, I recently changed positions at work and just the change in stress, like that alone was enough. Like it alleviated so many symptoms of other things that I am dealing with medically specifically just because, you know, like I'm not waking up in a bad mood. I'm not getting, you know, cause I, I work from home. I'm not getting on the computer and just in total agony because I don't want to deal with this. I'm not totally miserable and freaking out because of the stuff that I'm forced to do in the position. Like, let alone dealing with things like trying to figure out, you know, I really, you know, I mean, I could really go for some ice cream right now, but I should eat, you know, some broccoli instead or something like that. Uh, and maybe that's not stress, but like you, you just, the, the energy that comes with wanting what you can't have and, and how that can impact you. Yeah. No, I, I want you to enjoy your food. I will always find ways. I had a, a, call with my client last week and her thing is brownies but she likes the box brownies and I was like have make the brownies for the week here's a better brand let's throw some protein powder in there and then have a brownie at the end of the night like you should still be enjoying yourself and not feel restricted and I think that that's incredibly important there's so many different ways to have your favorite foods and just use better ingredients and then you're good to go and and so when we're talking about things like like protein powder specifically is that something that, because I, I know we've done like, uh, like, like a tray of like pancake bars where we would like meal prep for the week mm-hmm. and you'd have like one of those and stuff. Is that really something that's, that, that is good to be adding where you can as that replacement in your diet? Or is it, because I've also heard that in some instances there's dietary things like, uh, I, I don't know, protein powders and, uh, and things where if you, if you're taking, if you're eating too much of it, but not doing the, 
I guess, equal amount of like activity and exercise to balance that, it can actually lead to weight gain. Is that a thing? The issue with protein powders is it depends on the brand. I also rule number one, whole food form first, because protein powders are never going to be a complete protein. They're not going to have the complete amino acid profile to equal um, a complete protein. So do the best you can to get it from food and then use stuff like collagen or like a good quality protein powder. I like equipped foods is a really good one. Earth fed muscle is a really good one, depending on how you can tolerate whey. Um, or you can just do a collagen powder to boost your protein in pancakes. I encourage it um, just because so many people struggle with getting enough and not everyone wants to be like me and eat like a pound of smoked turkey a day just to get like reach my protein goals. You know what I mean? Like that's something you get sick of. Oh, when we, but, uh, when we sat down, my wife and I and did my calculation on how much protein I should be taking in a day. I was like, mm-hmm. I was completely floored. I'm like, how the hell yeah. am I supposed to eat all that in a day? When I, like, and I had the same thought. I was like, do I just need to eat a pound of lunch meat every day for lunch? <laughs> like, is that just what I'm going to have to do to make this work? Uh, yeah. Cause I, I didn't realize it. I, I seriously, I thought what I was doing was like, Hey, I have some protein in my diet. I'm okay. Is there mm-hmm. like, what, it, it, how do you calculate that? Is it, is, I'm assuming it's different for everyone based off of like height and your, and your weight and age and things like that. Is there an easy calculation or is it really something that, because I somebody told me I there's something based off of like my weight or something like that or my height and what I needed to mm-hmm. to be able to to calculate it is is there an easy calculation for that or is that something that like that really requires you to sit down and and go through like like a consultation and to figure it out for planning? The easiest thing you can do is and this is really hard because I don't like to focus so much on weight specifically. But you can do, if you're where you're at, where you want to be, and you want to gain a little bit of muscle, one pound of protein per body weight is going to be just the baseline or one pound per body weight of like your ideal weight. So if you want to drop 20 pounds, just like subtract 20 grams of protein, if that makes sense. That's the baseline. I do calculate macros for some people if they need it Um, when we work together and it is a little bit more tricky depending on your activity level, you know, there's like, um, you know, you can just sit on the couch all day activity level or moderate high stress, that type of thing. There's a lot of factors that go into it. Well, and that's the, the couch bit there. That's like, and that's the thing too, is cause you talk to a lot of people. Um, and I'll, I'll say in this community and you know, like the preparedness or, or two a community or as well as people outside of it. Right. Like I'll mention my own mother, uh, one, because I know it's true. And two, because I know she doesn't listen to this. Uh, <laughs> she is like the example, textbook example of somebody who would like, I don't think yo-yo diet is exactly the right term, but like she never met the physical activity uh, end of things. She would try to find all the quick fix things. She would try and do weird dieting things. She would try and Oh, I need to up, you know, I don't know. Uh, protein uh, cut out all carbs you know and and could never ever find success in in her weight loss goals um yeah because i mean like and it's not it's not supposed to be a knock i mean she's my mother i love her and she ran her own business at a, in a restaurant for 30 years like i'd be exhausted too with four kids but oh god yeah 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 it's uh <laughs> It wasn't my fault. I was an angel. It was the other three. I bet. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Totally. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, and so, and that's the thing, like, so what is, I mean, is it possible? Is it like truly in your opinion, possible to not do the physical piece of this and still find that success through the kitchen alone? Cause I'll be honest, my, my, when people talk to me about it, I go, you gotta, I tell my mom all the time, like you gotta get in the gym, just go do some walking, do something, but you can't not do anything. Yeah. Um, I think you definitely can, if you're under eating, you can lose weight, but if you're trying to burn fat there, it's just non-negotiable. You need to be lifting weights or strength training in general. However, that looks for you. I just tell people to lift weights. Um, you need that muscle mass because that's, what's going to burn the fat. It's going to help stabilize your blood sugar. It's going to help your cognitive function. It's, it's going to help a lot of your problems. If you're somebody that doesn't lift weights or doesn't strength train at all right now, start today, start tomorrow, just 
three days a week at least. Um, yeah, and, and I actually had to, I had to found that one out the hard way too. I thought that cardio was what was going to get me there the fastest. Yeah. yeah. I was wrong. I went through that too. <laughs> it was, I hated it. I hated my life at that moment. Yeah. Not cardio. a cardio fan. <laughs> yeah. Not, not my favorite part of the gym session, but I think it was my wife looked it up. She's like, yeah, your metabolism burns, I don't know, two or three times as long from weightlifting mm-hmm. as it does with cardio. I'm like, yeah, but I don't feel nearly as like awful after I would lift weights and <laughs> cardio yeah. makes me feel terrible and I hate it. And she yeah. goes, well, then you could actually probably be, oh, be okay if you cut out and I haven't cut out cardio, but I did not realize that weightlifting would do so much more for, mm-hmm. for that end of things. Yeah. It's doing it before you at rest. So you're burning all the fat at rest. You're burning all the fat overnight um, while your mu- muscles are replenishing and doing everything during your sleep cycles. Um, I mean, cardio is good. It's good to still be active and get out there and, you know, have that endurance, but you don't need to be running six miles a day unless you somehow thrive on that. But I haven't met anybody yet that loves to do that. (laughs) I have a buddy Um, who's like like that. Yeah. Those are weird people. I don't, I don't get who thrives on that. I I used to do like fasted running and I don't know why I did that. That was not a good time. That was a dark time. Does now, no, okay, so so the fasting bit, does does that, because I have a ton of people that are like, I'm going to try fasting or actually my my middle brother, um, he's bigger than I am. Uh, so he's like 6'5", he used to play college football and stuff, like huge, big dude. And now he's like, he fasts, he only eat, he eats at like 6.30 or 7 o'clock every night. And all he, he eats like six eggs and chicken. And that's like all he eats. And he has oh like... He has gotten so trim in the midsection. I don't, I'm like insanely jealous. I don't understand how he does it and still has mm-hmm. some semblance of a personal life. My only conclusion is that he doesn't, which <laughs> seems to be like works all day, comes home, works out in my parents' garage for two hours and then eats a bunch of protein and then like goes to bed and repeats. Yeah. I think mean, you definitely can lose weight like that. But once you start eating like a normal human again, you're going to shoot back up. You yeah, do he's a, a ton. You really. <laughs> burden your liver when you do stuff like that you fast at night when you're sleeping so there's really no need to be fasting during the day i mean that's what we should be sleeping at least like eight hours a night and going through all the sleep cycles and replenishing our um repairing our muscles and detoxing and doing everything that goes on while we're sleeping that's when we're fasting to let our body do all that so you need to i don't recommend anybody work out fasted Um, even if you just need to have like some berries and some Greek yogurt before a workout, um, you have to be eating. That's one of the the keys for weight loss too, is you have to be fueling your body to do what it needs to do to build the muscle, to sustain the muscle. And if you're taking shortcuts, it's not going to be sustainable in the long run is what I was going to say. You're not going to (laughs) maintain the gains or I guess weight or even weight losses, right? If you're not doing those things and it's, Again, it's it's contrary to what I think a lot of people believe, right? If mm-hmm. you're if you're eating, that's bad. If you're not eating, that must be good because you your goal is to lose weight. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, to your point, it, it doesn't work like that. Your body still needs to run, right? To to keep things burning and keep things going. Um, mm-hmm. And and again, fasting is is one of those things. I've I've had friends that were former guys who were former uh, special operations soldiers and stuff and. Uh, and, and in the air force and things, and they're like, yeah, I'm, I'm big on fasting. I, I fast, you know, whatever, how many hours it is. And I'm like, dude, I don't know if I can do that, man. Like I just, I work at like, you're moving around for work. Like you're, you're going and talking to people and driving back and forth and do like, you're doing stuff. I sit at a desk, you know, how insanely yeah. difficult it is to just sit there and not do anything, but drink water and interact on a computer all day. It is. Yeah. Mentally, I don't have that. I and maybe that's my my problem, but I I cannot yeah. do it. I've tried it. It was awful. Yeah, I tried uh-huh. it too. I did some intermittent fasting for a while. Um, it was one of my trials, and I was also sitting at a desk, drinking black coffee all morning long, just waiting for my eating window of like noon to six or something to pop up. Miserable. Mm-hmm. I just felt like crap, like just stressed all the time. Well, so, and one of the more. other things you mentioned too is so because you talk about fasting overnight when we're sleeping, mm-hmm. but something I struggle with, and I'm sure a lot of people do in today's day and age, is just getting that like eight hours of good solid sleep. 
mm-hmm. that's going to help you recharge. Like, I can't even tell you the last time I honestly, the last time I woke up and felt like, I, I mean, I can remember it happening in the past. I just don't know when that was <laughs> like where I wake yeah. up and I'm like, man, I feel great. Oh, it's going to be an awesome day. I don't, I don't, I don't get that. Cause I think on average, I usually sleep about six and a half hours every night or six hours. And I think a lot of people, we run it, we do that to ourselves. Everyone's you're on your phone. Yep. And blue light. I, I I've read anyways is terrible. It's what one of the mm-hmm. biggest things that keeps you awake. And then that kills your, your sleep because you, regardless, you still have to get up the same time for work the next day. Right. Yeah. You really have to create a better bedtime routine for yourself basically evening like I hate natural I mean not natural light I hate artificial lights we so rarely have them on unless I'm in the kitchen or you know in the bathroom or something like that Hmm. I hate having artificial light on in our home just because it's I can just feel it stressing me out like when I used to sit in office and just have these bright lights on me all day I could feel that and now like I'm sitting in my office no lights on I just have natural light in um, and I try to do that as much as possible I have these kind of cheap blue blocker glasses that mainly just help help the flicker. Um, but really just getting away from screens at the end of the day, like an hour before bedtime, read a book, go for a walk, do something that's not staring at your phone. <laughs> yeah, no. And I've, <laughs> I've really helped. I have wholeheartedly embraced the, the reading a book, not like a Kindle. Cause I think people get that mm-hmm. twisted. It's not the, it's not so much the mental, uh, or what people I think perceive as the mental stimulation piece of it, of just reading. It's Mm -hmm. like, it's the light and how your eyes and your brain and your body react to that artificial light. And I'm, because I've had friends like, why do you own all these books? Why wouldn't you just get a Kindle? It's cheaper. I'm like, yeah, but if it's just another device for me to play on, like it doesn't do anything for me. Like I I need, I want to feel the paper on my finger. Like I, I, I need that. I want to, relax that way and fall asleep that way. Yep. Same. And typically I do have a better, you know, night of sleep when I do it. I'll, and it doesn't have to be a lot. It doesn't be an hour or anything like 20 minutes before bed. I'm mm-hmm. usually my eyelids start getting heavy and I'm like, all right, now I know it's time and I'll put the book down. And what usually within 10 minutes I am asleep. Yeah. And, like, and it works. It really does. Yeah. And I, I mean, I am also, I'm, have to remind myself anything I tell everybody I'm also reminding myself of these things because I like to play video games so that's a dangerous game (laughs) in itself just like powering that down at the right time so I just am not looking at screens right before bed but um yeah and then you know I I run my business from my phone yeah I just that last night we had uh I play on Wednesday nights with my buddies we play call of duty and I tried getting up early to go read and I got a bunch of shit for it like I just stay on till 11 and yeah. and then go go and start read. I get the the struggles real. Twice last week, I was like, I'm just gonna play one more game, Call of Duty, and then it's all of a sudden it's twelve. Like this is way mm-hmm. past my bedtime. <laughs> We're playing like, like DMZ. Man. Those games are so long, and all of a yep. sudden it's the next day. So like tomorrow's gonna hurt. I can feel yeah. it. I'm like, this is exactly what I tell people not to do. <laughs> right. Well, it's. I mean, yeah. It's 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 it, it is somewhat difficult to 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 live it that way. I mean. But it is, I feel like if it's the exception, it's okay. And I think people get kind of twisted up in that too. Like you can't ever, like, I can't even tell you how many people I know that have literally ruined functions or ruined family events, whatever, like either by not showing up or not participating, whatever, because they're like, oh, well, I'm on a diet. So rather than put myself in that situation and not allow me Mm -hmm. to at least partake or participate or be around, like, I'm just not going to go because I'm not going to eat. I'm not going to drink. I'm not going to do whatever. And it's like, it doesn't, or at least it shouldn't right. Be such a rigid thing that it, because then it, then it impacts you in other ways. Like we were talking mm-hmm. about, you know, the stress levels and things. And, and honestly, I believe just like the good old fashioned human interaction. I think of the last couple yeah. of years, especially like you need to talk to people face to face, not over a screen. Absolutely. I totally realize the ridiculousness of that as we are doing this podcast over the screen, <laughs> but it, I mean, I, I never thought I'd be that person, but like, I actually miss going into the office. Like I miss mm-hmm. people, not necessarily the ones that I worked with, but I do miss people. Same. And I think that's why you saw so many issues. Well, one of the reasons <laughs> you saw issues coming mm-hmm. out of the pandemic, right. Were oh, yeah. lack of physical contact and things and, and how our bodies react to it. And now, I mean, yeah, it's like a, like there are days I'll make a special point of just going outside and standing in the sun 
for mm-hmm. 20 minutes or, you know, and getting barefoot and going and standing on the grass. Uh, yeah. and, or even when I go teach band camp and everyone always laughs when I talk about it, but I'll, <laughs> I go teach band camp. There is no cell reception or very little where we're at. I walk around barefoot on the field all week long and like, God damn, I, I feel better than th- that's probably the best feeling I am the entire year. Like, yeah, yeah, it's a lot of like nonsense with high school kids and their drama and everything. Right. But in terms of my physical well being, like, and I'm sleeping on a crappy mattress in a dorm room and, you know, yeah. but like in terms of my physical health, I don't feel that good any other time in the year. Yeah. And it's, that has to be it. Cause I'm spending all my time out in natural sunlight and mm-hmm. touching grass. And it's not just a meme, right? Like you should actually touch grass. There's, there's actually <laughs> stuff behind that. Yeah, exactly. I think getting out, especially first thing in the morning is now that it's summer. Well, when you have good air quality, <laughs> yeah, which we don't. Um, yeah, getting out in the morning, getting that sunlight first thing in the morning is another thing that's going to help your circadian rhythm too. And just getting out and walking, walking after meals is really good just for blood sugar regulation, getting outside, getting some more vitamin D. That is one of the best things you can do. And so what are some of the, cause I, so, so many of us spend time or too much time indoors. That's a vitamin D deficiency. And that's something I had dealt with. And I, I mean, in the summer, I'm usually fine. In the winter, I take vitamin D supplements um, after talking to my doctor and everything. But what does that kind of, what does that look like for people when they have a vitamin D deficiency? Because I feel like sometimes people get tied up like, oh, I didn't have enough vitamin B or whatever. And it's no big deal because reasons, but like, mm-hmm. especially with vitamin D and just being outside, regardless of what you're doing, what is, what are the negative impacts to stuff like that? Uh, missing out on vitamin D is that can show up in a ton of different ways. It can um, impact autoimmune disorders. A big one is like mood disorders. The vitamin D deficiency is huge for all. I mean, a ton of mood disorders came from all the pandemic stuff. So um, that was a big one. People just weren't outside, but at the, on the other end of that conversation, um, I think it's possible to still be inside or be in like colder climates or whatever and not be vitamin D deficient. There's also other things that come into play. Like you need more, you need to make sure you're getting enough magnesium and retinol in your diet. Those are both responsible for converting the hormone D in your liver and your skin. Um, But the biggest thing I see is a lot of inflammation, autoimmune disease, a contributor to autoimmune disease, not like the cause, Yeah, yeah, Um, yeah. but mood disorders is a huge one because once people start to get the sunshine and, or if they need to supplement or they get the magnesium and whatever they need, whatever it looks like for them, once they start to get it, they feel lighter, their moods are more stable, they're happier. And a lot of people like to joke and kind of talk shit about that and say like, okay, I have depression. I'm not just going to go outside and work out. That's not going to fix it. Like, are you doing it consistently? Like every day? You tried. Like some people, I feel like just say that like, and dismiss, they're just dismissive. Like right. it's just the sun. Yeah. Like, like it, you actually okay. need it though. There's a, there's a reason why it's there, but yeah, that's a big one. As I think there's so many different mood disorders right now, a lot of depression and anxiety and just instability of some kind. And that that's a big one. Vitamin D deficiency is a big one for that. Yeah. And it's, it's, well, and the unfortunate part is it's so, it's so preventable. Like you said, there's so Mm -hmm. many different ways to get it. I mean, um, uh, I'm pretty sure in, I want to say it's like Sweden. It's one of those European countries where they're like overcast weather, like 90% of the time they have one Mm -hmm. of the highest suicide rates in the world, if not the highest. And it's, it's, I believe I'd have to double check the the research on it, but it has a lot to do with that because they never see the sun and it leads to depression, which left unchecked obviously leads to, you know, potentially right. Suicide. And, you know, when you start looking at it in terms of that, it's like, okay, well, you never wanted to get that far, but like, that's don't just look at the worst case, you mm-hmm. know, look at everything else that's associated with it. The inflammation thing is huge. Yeah. Uh, you know what? And that can be linked to, to anything in your body, you know, digestive mm-hmm. stuff is inflammation based, uh, right. not always, but I was surprised when I figured that out. You know, when I started yeah. taking CBD supplements and things to help uh, reduce inflammation, how much better I felt in stuff I wasn't expecting to, uh, you know, to address, like take it for a joint issue. And all of a sudden your digestive health gets better. Yeah. Things like that. 
Yeah. And with vitamin D too, it's in a lot of like fattier foods. So if you're having, you know, good quality dairy, eggs, fish, um, cod liver oil, raw cod liver oil is a good supplement to take because it's high in vitamin D, but it's also high in retinol. So you're getting um, good fats there. Um, I was going to say something else about that. I think I lost my train of thought there. (laughs) So you've mentioned retinol a few different times and my brain always just goes back to those really bad commercials on like skin creams. Oh, yeah. So can can that, that can be ingested as well. And and what does that do for you? So I'm not necessarily talking, I mean, there might be some retinol creams that I don't know, but I'm actually talking about retinol, like vitamin A, which is a fat soluble vitamin, not like the chemical topical. Um, It's found in fish, eggs, red meat, dairy, that type of thing. All the stuff that have those diets tell you to stop eating. Right. Exactly. Yeah. (laughs) And all of a sudden you're depressed. Not all of them. I mean, uh, the Atkins diet, I'm, you know, you guess you're going real heavy on that stuff, but, um, and my younger brother did that, uh, when he was trying to make, it was awful. He was playing youth league football. And for whatever reason, these people hadn't like, checked and raised weight limits since like the eighties. So he was at like nine years old running in like the um sauna suits and like trying to cut weight mm-hmm. and everything so just so he could play. He's just like yeah. a naturally taller, bigger kid, like not fat, just bigger. Um mm-hmm. and for for his age and everything. And it was I mean it was awful. Like if people want to see like an example of how just truly difficult this can be on a human from a psychological standpoint, uh like watch a child go through that because like it was heartbreaking you know like even just watching my parents having to deal with it or like hey we have this whole box here of candy bars you're selling for a fundraiser he would want some because he's a child and right you kind of lack that grasp you know and he would eat some of them not supposed to and then like have my parents have to come down on him about it because then the the consequences well and you can't play on sunday and then you sit out and you cry because you want to play Mm-hmm. And it's like, it, it's, it's a very difficult thing in a lot of ways to, to have to live yeah. through it. Like, even just watching it as his brother, I was like, but I didn't know how to process it. And I was like 16 or 17 years old at the time. Like, this is, this is pretty rough. There, there's yeah, a lot I'd of, imagine, I'd imagine there's a lot of, um, very unhealthy relationships with food formed in the very young ages like that. Oh, I would believe that. A lot of fear. My wife has told me that. She says she thinks that half my eating urges are because of bad relations. Like, and I don't, I'm, I apologize for cutting you off, but like my dad was one of those, you, you clean your plate and that's, that's that type things. And apparently mm-hmm. that might be a root cause of some other problems, I guess. Yeah. I've read a lot of different things about different psychological patterns in kids that deal with that kind of thing. So, I mean, I, if you don't want to eat, just don't eat, but then you're going to be hungry. <laughs> yeah. You know, no, I, I, mean, I wouldn't never true. force food down people's throats. Like, for example, there's not people's kids. Um, for example, there's um, this research where kids can taste uh, like young kids, like less than 10 years old can taste like the the anti-nutrients in cruciferous vegetables. So if you're fighting your child to eat broccoli, it's because they don't want broccoli. It's because they need healthy fats and they need fruit and they need, you know, the good stuff, stuff that yeah. kids want to eat. Um, and kids just gravitate towards what they need really, as long as they're supported well enough and it's not Skittles for dinner or something. <laughs> well, and that, and it sounds like, so that that'll change, right? Like as they get yeah. older, some of that will change. And that's why, yeah. Cause I used to like, as a, as a smaller child, like I used to hate eggs. Like the only way I yeah. could eat scrambled eggs or something was like doused in ketchup, you know, basically cancel out anything nutritious by covering it in sodium. Mm-hmm. And now that I'm older, like I love eggs. I could eat eggs every meal mm-hmm. and stay the hell away from me with that ketchup bottle. Like, don't come near me. Like a little hot <laughs> sauce. Yes. Like I love yeah. some red hot on my eggs, but ketchup, like yeah. I, I'm actually disgusted by scrambled eggs and ketchup now at this point <laughs> in my life. Um, you, you know, but it, that, that makes sense. To, to, to hear that, you know, uh, especially with vegetables too, because it's such a struggle. I feel like with, with children, even with some adults, I have, I have friends that are adults. Like they just don't like, I don't eat vegetables. I was like, at all, you don't eat any vegetables. He's like, eh, no, I don't like, well, maybe you should look into that. I mean, you're 40, <laughs> so you might yeah. be missing some things. 
I, I am the belief from everything I've learned. Cause I, you know, I've been plant-based before I've done all these weird diets. I've done low carb and I would just have like chicken and broccoli every single day and be miserable. Um, but you're not getting as much from cruciferous vegetables that people think. I think the best thing is if they're really well cooked, they can be a good source of fiber for you for some people if you enjoy them but you're really getting the bulk of your nutrients from you know animal foods and root vegetables a lot of fruit honey maple syrup that type of thing and then you can bring in cruciferous vegetables as long as they're well cooked because they can also be difficult on the the digestive system so these people are thinking they're being really healthy with cramming salads in their face all day, every day. And then they're wondering why they're bloated or, you know, constipated maybe, or whatever their issue is. It's just, it's too much of that unless they're getting not as much of the good animal based foods and, you know, the minerals from fruit and all of that, if that makes so, sense. So having some chicken with your, or with chicken with your salad or the side salad yeah. with your with your steak, right? Uh, everything in its right balance and proportions. Yes. And it, it also de- just depends on, you know, you and your individual status and how you're able to break stuff down. Some people can't stomach any vegetables at all for a while. And they have to go on a really easy, like easy to digest kind of protocol for a little bit, just to heal their gut lining a little bit. And then they can introduce stuff back in for a long time, for about a year, I cut out Like I like broccoli. I like Brussels sprouts. I like all that stuff as long as they're, you know, cooked right. Um, But for like a year, I had to cut that stuff out because it was really making me feel like crap. I also had overdone it, you know, and doing the whole plant-based thing when I was scared of meat (laughs) and all that stuff after I got my gallbladder out. That was a dark time for me, but um, I eventually bring it back in and still I don't eat a ton anymore. Every once in a while I'll have a salad or roast some broccoli or something like that but i don't do a ton of vegetables unless it's like root vegetables which i haven't even been doing now because i've just been wanting a lot of fruit so yeah i mean and it's it it doesn't have to be your whole diet and that's where i like Mm -hmm. i get frustrated when people start talking about like have you tried going vegan? Have you tried vegetarian? Have you tried whatever? Like, uh, when my, again, same middle brother, the one shredding all the weight and everything going through college. And we, we have, there's two things he's ever said that we have never let him live down. The first was that he did his like, I don't know, sophomore term paper on the existence of Illuminati. The second was when he came to like Thanksgiving dinner at our house and wanted to not eat uh, Turkey with us. Because he told us that animal protein is some of the worst stuff you can put in your body. And I was like, oh. dude, you're the size of a house and not in a <laughs> bad way. Like, how are you going to sit here telling me you were raised on all this? And is that bad for you? Like, do you, do you hear yourself right now? You, yeah. He, he tried doing that whole, you know, and now of course he's back to, you know, literally animal protein, like farm fresh eggs and a ton of chicken and, and like smoked salmon and stuff. I'm like, yeah. oh, so. Is it still, is it still some of the work <laughs> you can put in your body or do we feel different now? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you just got to hit rock bottom with your health to see that other people were right, I guess. <laughs> well, you know, and, and the, the fad dieting, it's just, it's such a, you know, and, and as someone who has struggled to try and like lose weight around my midsection, like I get some absolutely just ridiculous comments on like my Instagram and stuff where guys are like, I would, you know, I would PT you until your face fell off. Or have you tried a diet? Have you tried a vegetable? I'm like, yeah, dude, I I have. I think there's just like a, a general, like I obviously need to understand more about where I'm missing things in my diet to like fill in those gaps. It, mm-hmm. It's difficult. I, and you know, it's everything we've said so far, like, because it's a different, the, the answer to the question is different for every single person. Right. You know, it's not going to be, and it's not easy. That's one of the things I had to, I have still figuring out, right? Like the hard way is that none of this is going to happen in a short amount of time. The only way that happens is if you get like deathly ill, like I had a buddy who had to have his colon removed and I watched a guy who was like 160, 170 pounds drop below a hundred. And I was like, okay, um, you're smaller than you were in high school, bro. Uh, this is rough. Yeah, this is you. All he was eating was bone broth because he just everything going on like couldn't. Yeah, 
you know, it's not going to be a oh quick, quick drop, you know, and I've actually had people refute that. Like I've had people say body recomposition takes time. This takes yes. time to, to change everything. And then people come back with, well, yeah, but basic biology doesn't lie. And either you're just a lazy piece of shit or you're doing what you're supposed to. And it's like, that's a pretty black and white way to look at a very yeah. gray issue. I, I yeah. would estimate. Yeah. There's a lot of reasons why you could be doing the work that normally would get you the results that maybe you have a sluggish liver. Maybe your digestion just isn't as good as you think it is. Maybe you actually have way too much stress going on and your cortisol levels are higher than they should be at the wrong times of the day. That type of thing. There's a million different reasons. Insulin resistance is huge in this country. Um, really? That's yeah. Insulin resistance not only causes obesity, I actually listen to this interesting Ted talk this doctor did where, um, you know, people are under the assumption that type two diabetes and insulin resistance is just caused by being overweight. If that were true, every overweight person would have it. And a lot don't, um, insulin resistance can happen from like some women I know that have Hashimoto's dealt with insulin resistance or PCOS have insulin resistance. You can be a normal, um, weight looking person. It's a weird thing to say, <laughs> try to say that the best I could <laughs> yeah. and deal with insulin resistance and which in turn can make you gain weight. So there's just a, a myriad of issues. Yeah. And, and it's, again, it's so individual, like, and, mm -hmm. and that right there, the insulin piece, like, I don't, I mean, most people wouldn't even consider that it, it's, right. it's probably not what you like start a conversation with when you meet people, you know? So yeah. like, of course it's not at the forefront of anybody's mind, but it's something like, even when you hear the word insulin, you just go straight to diabetes and you either had too much sugar or you're not eating enough sugar or like, that's, that's the entire conversation for yeah a lot of people and there's it's just and, and that's the problem right with this whole conversation is it there's yeah. it's it is not it's not easy to understand and grasp on your own yeah. unless it's something like like how, how long have let me ask this how long have you been have you been pursuing you know your your knowledge and everything around this and and it sounds like you've done i don't want to say trial and error but you've 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 gone that's through fun. some things too you know and and figured this yeah. out um so i i mean a little bit of backstory i was diagnosed with um, rheumatoid arthritis when i was like a toddler so i dealt which is an autoimmune disease and so i dealt with that my entire life basically told like just take a leave or ibuprofen when you feel pain and that was basically it that's all i knew that's all i was told i that's saw the totally doctors healthy. a lot just load yeah. yourself up on drugs yeah that's perfect yeah. one of the things that is awful for your liver just take that for the rest of your life um so i dealt with that and then on and off and then in my 20s i was when i really started to gain weight and i that's when i was experimenting with all the different diets I did cleanses, I did fasting, I did diets, I did the fasted running because I was like, oh, this will surely burn all my fat. Mm -hmm. And just, it didn't help anything. And then I actually moved to Louisiana in 2015 into a house that was riddled with mold everywhere. And I didn't know what mold could do to you at the time, but it can, if you or your listeners are not aware, it can really just inflame and bring to light any other health issues you have under the surface that you really don't even know about. So my rheumatoid arthritis symptoms just shot through the roof. I was super inflamed all the time. I could not lose weight no matter what I did. Um, and then in 2018, I ended up in the hospital with pancreatitis and I almost oh. died because I had, um, I, they went, I went in for a procedure and they, I went into like complete respiratory failure, almost complete kidney failure. They basically told my husband and my parents just that I, it wasn't looking good. Like I wasn't going to make it just make preparations for that. Oh my um, God. I did make it. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was in like a coma for like a week, maybe a little bit over a week. I was in the hospital for over two weeks. Um, and after that, I came out with type one diabetes, which is when, cause my pancreas got like pretty messed up. So um, it doesn't make as much insulin as it should. So I manage that now. Um, I got my gallbladder out the January after that happened. So I had to deal with that as well. And that's another thing that people just, 
that's another very common procedure people get and don't mm-hmm. understand that you have to support your bile flow and you support your liver for the rest of your life um, and take supplements for that. Um, and so then I spent a really long time going to doctor's appointments every week. I had a rheumatologist. I had all this whole team of doctors and it was a lot of trial and error with medications and I was still inflamed. I was exhausted to my core. I was depressed. I was like the worst I've ever been in my whole life. I mean, that's and exhausting just, point, just hearing it. Yeah. Yeah. I had one point I was like, I can't do this anymore. So I stopped going and I just dove into the research and I learned everything that I know now and I brought myself back to life and the fog lifted and I had energy to do things. I was sleeping through the night. I had energy all day long, which in my whole life, I never had. I never slept well before, especially in my twenties. I was sleeping like four hours a night, working a crazy stressful job. I was going to say, I don't, who in their twenties ever actually sleeps the way they should. (laughs) (laughs) That's a good point. Um, But now I, I'm just so much more resilient to stress and, I don't have those ups and downs in my energy levels every day. Um, And I am human. Some days are crappy. Like today I'm kind of struggling a little bit, but you know, that's being human. Um, But yeah, that's, that's, I had to take control because I was completely miserable. I felt like I wasn't going to make it if I didn't change something myself. Cause it was, it got pretty dark. I, I, yeah. I, I mean, I couldn't, I could not even imagine uh, going through half of that, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's a whole lot (laughs) Yeah. to, to go through and live through. And like, and honestly, I mean, you made a great deal of the whole, of the whole, of the whole thing, right. Found a way through it on your own. And, Mm -hmm. you know, and that's maybe even highlights to people like, Hey, maybe just going to see your doctor isn't always the best. Like, doctors i'm not saying don't go to your doctor like anybody listening right. to this I'm not telling you right. not to seek out your 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 fucking health professionals but what i am yeah. saying is that like i know a lot of people both family and friends that holistically have had a lot better luck dealing with you know long-term ailments and things and, and like what you just described there through through the holistic approach you know yeah I, that is one of the things that I know our military does a shitload and our just our healthcare system here in America, because the money that is involved with it does a ton is just here, take these drugs. This is, mm-hmm. these drugs are going to fix you it's like, well, they did. And that problem is gone and that's great. But then it created these other issues like, well, mm-hmm. that's fantastic because we have these other drugs you can take that are going to fix that. And then you eventually you're taking like five pills a day and somewhere in the middle of that, you never actually quite got back to feeling like yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I, I couldn't take it anymore. And that's, that's the biggest issue that I see is you feel this way. So here's a medication Mm -hmm. and then that's it. And we'll just get, if this doesn't work, we'll put you on a different one. Okay. But like, why is this happening to me though? And people don't, people don't either know enough, they don't care enough, but people just stop asking why. And Unfortunately, <laughs> most of our medical system doesn't really care about the why. They just care about, you know, getting you to shut up about your chronic pain or. Yeah, it's it's terrible. I mean, like, and that's one of the things like at, at the beginning of the conversation, you mentioned, you know, the kind of like that interview process you go through and to, to understand the clients that you work with. Like, let me understand you first and foremost, mm-hmm. like you're eating your life. Do you have kids? Do you not? What's work like? I can honest, I was so blown away when I had that. I didn't know what to do with myself because I was so used to the like, I don't know, 15 previous doctor's visits or 20 previous doctor's visits. It's like, they are so booked back to back. You get like four to seven minutes with the, whoever comes in to do the triage paperwork in the beginning. And then if I saw my doctor for more than five minutes, I was like, wow, you're actually in here for, you're in here for a while. They usually come in, they'll go over your chart here and we like put a, flashlight in your mouth or face or something and then uh no you know yeah here we're gonna try this medicine go ahead try this and uh let's schedule you for follow-up in three weeks yeah like that was it that was it that's all you're gonna do we're not gonna talk about this no hey how how are you how's your wife nothing and yeah by the way it's gonna cost you you know 75 or 100 dollars just for that five minutes Mm -hmm. and it's ridiculous because it yeah it's like it takes you six months to get done what could probably be achieved in two hours. 
Mm-hmm. But it's just not as profitable. Right. Yeah. And it's not to shit on, like, like you said, like not the whole medical system, not everybody is like this. There's a ton of amazing doctors, amazing medical professionals out there. Um, I haven't, I have, my primary care was good. I liked her, but everyone else just kind of like threw their hands up at me and they're like, well, you could take this if you want to, that type of thing. But I will never forget one of my first clients when I started bringing on clients is we went through our entire valuation like that. Like I told you, we went through everything. Mm -hmm. And at the end of it, she's like, wow, I actually, I don't feel crazy anymore. Like you're actually telling me I'm, this is valid because all the other doctors she had seen is like, they just look at me like I'm crazy or they gaslight me or, you know, and I was like, that's a very common experience. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, it it really is. And I, I think it's part of the reason why people struggle with overcoming the health issues or even just weight loss in general. Cause you're going to the doctor, you're trying to figure this out and people just want it. They just want it gone. And by mm-hmm. it, I mean like they just want you gone and they don't want to have to deal with it. So then you can't find help and people, you kind of get like that point of hopelessness, that like semi-depression phase where you're like, well, life goes on. I'll just deal with it. Yeah. You know? And so when we talk about trying to get yourself personally and physically to that, I don't want to say next level, but just that like better, better you, you know, where you're, you're, where you want to be, to be healthier and happier. It's, it's almost like going to the doctor sets you back a couple of steps and a lot of yeah. money. Oh yeah. Yeah. You really have to advocate for yourself and you have to, if you find yourself leaving your doctor's appointment and you don't feel like you've made any progress, you're just like, okay, great. Now I just have this new prescription. I don't feel like I was heard. You should feel heard. You should feel supported and you shouldn't feel like, okay, that was just five minutes. Why did I even come here? You know, they could have just renewed my prescription over the phone. Like I I dealt with that so many times. I was like, I just took off work. I drove across town. Here we are. I was in there for five minutes and I have like five new prescriptions to pick up on my way home. And I still feel like crap and I don't know what's going on. Yeah, it's I've I exactly I've been there. And then you're like, oh, we're gonna get you a Z pack of steroids. Uh, you'll be fine. And you go and it's like cool, ninety dollars. Like for seven pills. Yeah. Seriously? It's yeah, it's uh, I have whole, I have really started to try and like I was one, I will be honest I was one of those people like growing up my parents were always like like don't like don't smoke weed weed's bad don't do any of that stuff and I and I still don't but because of that right when they started hearing about CBD coming out right in the last mm-hmm. 10, 15 years really getting traction as you know we're legalizing marijuana and stuff and I was like I'm not gonna try CBD like that's 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 for stoners I'm not gonna do that. You know, mm-hmm. and then as I like progressed towards, I guess basically kind of like towards hopelessness of like, well, none of these drugs are working. Like, and my wife, like, just she bought me like a jar of like these gummies. They're just like no THC, just like here, you take some before bed. And then there was, I think maybe one in the morning or something like that. I don't know. And I actually had better quality sleep because of it. And like, and it's not a miracle drug. It's not like you take one, and you just right. feel nothing. But like between those and I have had it a couple of times, like the, the kill cliff CBD drinks, like it takes the edge off, which yeah. honestly is great because then yeah. if you start doing some of the other behaviors too, like getting outside and touching some grass, spending some time out in the sun, those things combined, like I felt great, you know, yeah. and, it, and, it, and it like energized me to want to go out and like do other things, go to the shooting range, go go hike with my buddies, go I mean, anything. Right. Mm-hmm. As opposed to like, uh, you know, I really, it might rain. So I'm just going to stay in like, yeah. you know, that like defeatist mentality that just isn't going to get you anywhere. Yeah. No, I love CBD. That is something that was a very crucial tool for me to take the edge off after I got my gallbladder removed. Cause navigating that and how to eat and all of that, my, I was just always in pain. I was always nauseous. And mm-hmm. I just, I think it was a tincture I'm pretty sure it's a tincture I use. I started using that every morning and every night. And it it just within a week, I just felt better. Oh, I it just helped and, me and, while I was dealing with everything else. <laughs> yeah. And and the 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 crummy part, like just like I just said, that like stigma that comes with when you say C B D, people automatically assume that you're trying to get high. Oh yeah. And I'm like, no, it's not like I've walked in to go teach band, you know, walked into a high yeah. school drinking one of these kill cliffs, and there's no THC in it. You know, I'm just drinking it and like, you know, I've, I've actually been sat down and like, what's going on with that? You can't have that here. I'm like, 
okay, let's just chill out for a second and evaluate the likelihood that I brought something like that into a school <laughs> knowing yeah. that you all were going to be here. Like, yeah. let's, you know, you have to respect me better than that. Yeah. Like, well, and, and once you explain it, you know, the people that I work with were, were cool. It's like, oh, okay. You know, n- no big deal. Yeah. But the stigma is there. I think a lot of people, you know, uh, especially the older generation, like my parents and stuff, they're hesitant to try it because of those reasons or, okay, maybe they're that generation. They were really into it when they were younger. So they're overly willing to try it. I don't know. Yeah. But it, I think it's something that if, and maybe, you know, as things get legalized federally, hopefully it drives the cost of, of extracting CBD down and makes mm-hmm. it more accessible. Cause I can tell you, honestly, that's like, that's the hardest part about that is just the cost barrier. Yeah. It's incredibly expensive right now for, for people to justify those kinds of expenses. Yeah, unless it, unless it's really the, the difference maker, then you know you get to a certain point and you'll justify a whole lot for your yeah. your mind and comfort. That is true. So, um, for our listeners, and if you know they want to contact you and and understand more about what you're doing specifically, can you talk a little bit about where you know what you're doing, um, and and where they can connect with you and contact you? So you can email me at jamie at unrelentingwellness.com if you don't have social media. If you do, you can mess just send me a DM on Instagram. Um, I also have an application linked in my profile. And it's just unrelenting wellness on Instagram. You can find me there and send me a DM and we'll chat. I'm actually running a flash sale soon. So if anybody that's listening, what is today? pull up my calendar it says the 29th um do like until the 14th if they want to just message me and say they came from your podcast or use code prepared or um, anything like that they can get 250 off my six-month program and then they can get a free 60-minute bonus call which in itself is like a 250 dollar um value so yeah, and then no, we'll and just chat and you can, we can discover, we can do a discovery call so we can just jump on the phone and we can just chat and make sure we're a good match to work together. You can ask me whatever questions you want. I'm an open book. Um, but yeah, that's about it. I mean, that's the big one. Honestly, that first, like I said, I'll say it again. When I worked with that physical therapist, like that first 60 minute conversation, and it's all it was, there was mm-hmm. no physical, it was just a conversation. I was so blown away that somebody actually just listened. And like you said, mm-hmm. was like, you're not crazy. You're not weird for it, like it, nothing you're feeling is wrong. You're completely justified. Right. And, 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 and then, yes, I've heard these things before. Like, yeah, we can help. I know yeah. exactly what you're talking about. Like that feeling of being understood, but then also that you're not the only one going through this. Like that, that, that for me, and that, that was mm-hmm. huge. And when I ended my therapy, I, I'm not even ashamed to admit this. I cried a little bit. I hugged that woman. I get like, that. I, it was, it was like a life-changing thing going through that kind of like a care experience. So that's yeah, awesome to hear that there's more of that out in the world because it was the only time I've ever experienced it. Yeah. That's top priority is I want you to feel heard and supported. And that's why I used to only work for people for three months, but honestly, three months is about the mark where people start to see the change within yep. themselves. And so six months is ideal. So then at the three month mark, we can be like, this is working. If it's not, let's fix it end of six months and that's it's big commitment it's a big chunk of time but you have complete access to me you can message me on my app um we have hour-long check-in calls every single month um re-evaluations to make sure we're on the same track all of that stuff so i'm yeah. with you every step of the way this isn't like i write down your protocol and just be like here you go good luck i'll see you yeah. in six months <laughs> No, I mean, honestly, and and what you just said there, that was my experience too. Like my, I got, I was only approved through my insurance for like the 12 or 14 weeks, whatever. But like, I was seeing the results doing the exercises and the dietary things. And like, exactly. Like, I wish I would have had another 12 weeks of going in once a week to see, you know, or even just, you know, being able to check in uh, every couple of weeks and go, Hey, here's how I'm feeling. Like, could talk about it, you know, uh, to, to get to where I, I really wanted to be with it. So, I mean, that yeah. it sounds amazing. And, uh, and I really do appreciate you, you know, joining me for the discussion, uh, and coming on, this has been enlightening. Uh, oh, good. it's, thank you for having me. This, no, I, I, love this. It, 
I I think especially in in the two A community, right? For as much emphasis as we put on overall capability and physical fitness, like it's a very one sided discussion. Like, mm-hmm. yes, building muscle is great and going in the gym and you know, uh, and that's and I know that's how I found you was actually through Jared at uh, Orion Training Group. And Mm -hmm. he's big on, you know, working out and he does all the videos in his fucking weird socks, uh, doing pull-ups and stuff and all this. (laughs) Uh, and I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I want to, like, I I want to get to that, but like, how do I get, like, how do I get over the hump that I'm at right now? You know? And I think that's where a lot of people really are at. And then he posts all those like ridiculously good looking food videos and and pictures and stuff, you know, cause I'm sure he probably has a much better understanding of this than I do now, but, um, bringing He's your committed. information. Yeah. I bringing what, what you teach to people and giving that access that it's just as important as anything else in this, in this community. I'm, I'm a hundred percent convinced of that. So, uh, I'm, I'm happy to have had you on and, and more than happy, you know, to direct the audience, obviously to, to commit, to reach out to you and get help. Thank you. I appreciate that a lot. No, absolutely. And, uh, I, again, thank you so much. And I, I would, I'd love to have you back on in the future and maybe even build a follow up with what I've been doing. That'd be awesome. I'd love that. Great. Well, thank you, Jamie. And, and, uh, like I said, we'll be in touch. All right. Sounds good. Wow. What, a like an interesting conversation, you know, really, I, I really think that in this community, this is the kind of information that we need to be giving out and, and talking about and, and, and offering up, you know, uh, it's great. Like, you know, there's a million and a half guys out there teaching shooting and teaching tactics. And, and that's not a knock on any of them that there's certainly a lot of value there. I think that's what most of us are here for. Right. But we also really get tied up in the conversation around, you know, personal f- capability, uh, individual fitness and, and health. And we should, right? We should because long-term sustainability is dependent upon your ability to be to be functional, right? So things like your ability to lift things, your physical stamina, those are all, those, I mean, those are very broad, but it's it's important with what we're talking about, you know, Hey, in the event that you need to be able to walk five miles to be able to carry 50 pounds, be able to carry another human being, right? Can you do so? Do you have the muscles to be able to do so? Do you have, are you fit enough that you're going to be able to carry out these different tasks or requirements depending on your scenario and environment and things like that? Um, and you know, it's just, and it's, it's something that a lot of people struggle with. I know I'm not the only one out there. I, I will, I, will own that I have struggled with trying to understand how to be healthier, how to eat better, how to lose weight and and how to maximize what I do at the gym. And it's not an easy thing to understand. You know, Jamie and I said it several times in that conversation. It's not a one size fit all solution. A lot of people are out there selling their plan as a one size fit all. And Oh no, we have this menu that takes you 30 seconds and in 30 seconds, they're going to know enough about you to get your, uh, you know, your to get your, your ideal body, uh, figured out and just give you a workout plan. And <clears throat> I mean, I've never tried it. So maybe, hell, maybe it does work, but I would be very inclined to say that it probably doesn't, uh, as, as with anything in life, right. Or in, in this community specifically, it takes time. It takes time to learn these concepts. It takes time to practice these concepts and it takes time to see the, the fruit of that labor and, and those efforts. It is the same with your, your physical self and your, your personal health and wellness. So that's what makes what Jamie does so incredibly valuable is that she puts that personal amount of detail and attention that I think is lacking in so many instances and is the thing that a lot of us need to understand ourselves, you know, to, to put it quite simply, uh, from an, you know, a, a health perspective and, and holistically, you know, uh, talk to anybody who's been injured in the military or been through multiple surgeries in the military, uh, you know, for all the good things that the military does for our country and all the good things that a lot of these service members came out of whatever branch of the military with experiences with medical, there typically not great and experiences the VA also very not good. It's, 
you know, the guys at Fieldcraft Survival have talked about it at length, uh, you know, and I've had friends that have talked about it with me personally at length, and some have even mentioned it here on this podcast that, you know, whether, and, and I shouldn't even just stop it there. It shouldn't even be the, just the military. It's, it's the American healthcare system in, in general. It's driven by the dollar. So it's a lot of just throwing drugs at people, prescribing new medications. Here, try this. No, that didn't work. Try this. Oh, you're still having these issues. Go see this specialist doctor who's going to give you more drugs to try for another two. And, you know, in almost no time at all, you're six months, eight months, a year into trying to figure out what's going on with your body. And all you've done is spend a ton of money whether that's before or after insurance. Uh, in some cases, you've depleted your savings account, missed a bunch of work, potentially lost a job, and you're no better for it. You know, So I, that's where I think there's a lot of value here in the, uh, the holistic nutrition that, that Jamie really specializes in and, and brings that knowledge forward. Uh, it's something that I highly recommend. You know, my experience, uh, very similarly, was, was outstanding. You know, I would recommend it to anybody that that personal attention to get to know you to to talk to you, not you know take three minutes to learn your symptoms and then make a one size fits most recommendation on what pill is going to fix this, right? But really to understand your life and you know and here's the thing you're not the only one going through it, and it sounds like a very simple thing, but I tell you when you are that frustrated and you're at a point in life where you just don't know that you're ever going to see the end of it. Yeah, it makes a huge difference. So highly, highly encourage you guys to go check out what Jamie's got going on. You know, talk to her. Just have the conversation, you know, and hopefully you end up signing up for the program. But if not, at the very least, see what she's got going on. I think you'll be very surprised at the level of attention that comes into something like that. And an hour flies by. It did for me. All right, so definitely head over to her Instagram. It's at Unrelenting Wellness. Uh, you can check out her uh, the link that she has there in her bio on Instagram. Reach out, schedule a call, see what's going on, and and take take a hold of what you got going on in your life, and and take a hold of what you want for yourself. I really do hope you guys uh, enjoyed this one, or at the very least, maybe just learn some things uh, and and broaden your understanding of uh, your health, your fitness, your, your overall wellness. It's not always just about, you know, doing the right behaviors. It's about understanding what those behaviors are, understanding why it's important to do them, understanding the what, you know, and, and also just knowing, right, that you don't have to give up everything positive, you know, from a food perspective, you don't have to give up the things you love. There's a way to meet those needs. A lot of times it just urges that we don't even understand why we have them or that we can address those urges in a, in a better way more, more healthy way, right? Whether it's sweets or salty foods or whatever have you. Um, but I, I do, I know this is like a, a pretty radical departure from, you know, what we normally talk about here, but hell, you know, I think that it's really good stuff. I think that it's something that we need to talk about more. I think that you cannot have the conversation about your physical fitness and your capability and what it means for you as, uh, I'll use the term, I guess, combatant. That seems to be thrown around a lot as we're talking about preparedness and capability and shooting and training and things. You can't have that conversation about fitness and muscles and building muscle and everything and not also at the same time look at what you're putting in your body, how you're fueling your body and how you're caring for your body. And and not just in terms of before and after you go to the gym, but truly a day to day. You know, we talked about it with Jamie a lot, you know, with the sleep and the phones and things like that. There's a whole lot that goes into what makes you, you. So again, hopefully if you guys, you know, got nothing else out of this, it just made you think a little bit differently. Um, and I do, you know, honestly, I do really hope that you guys reach out to Jamie and see if she's able to help you, uh, or a loved one get back on track. Uh, it was a great discussion. Uh, super, super thrilled to be able to grab some time with her, and I look forward to checking with her down the line, definitely. Uh, and you guys, you know, thank you all again for for taking the time as well to to listen and and to uh, support what we got going on here at the Prepared Mindset. Um, you know, great great things coming down the line here. Very, very excited for what we got going on, and uh, hopefully this this air quality bit kind of. Uh, you know, cleans up here in Michigan and Canada gets it all under control and we can get everything uh, back on track for the summer of 2023. But that's all you got, guys. Uh, nothing else to say this week. 
uh, except that as always, you know, we got another great episode next week and coming up on 4th of July here. So that's all, you know, until next time, folks, get out there, work hard, train smarter. And like we always say here, be prepared. Be prepared.